So welcome back. We have been looking at how Kripke structures can be pruned when you get more information. This information can either come through public announcements as we saw or it could come through individual actions as well. So actions like raising a hand is equivalent to saying yes, which is also like a public announcement. So we are talking about public announcements here. So let us look at the case of muddy children uh, and let us say there are three muddy children and let us say they are the same three and Bob and Kathy who were playing cards before this. Now they are playing outside and this is the real world as shown here in which Anne and Bob have got muddy foreheads and Kathy does not have a muddy forehead. So that is the real world but because there are three variables each can take two values 0 or 1. There are 3 raised, 2 raised to 3 which is 8 possible worlds as shown here and the distinguishability relation between all these worlds essentially. So, in the given world and cannot distinguish between the given world and 0 1 0 because and does not know whether Anne's forehead is muddy or not essentially. But it knows that Bob's forehead is muddy and she knows that Kathy's forehead is not muddy. Likewise, Kathy cannot distinguish between the fact where she does not know whether she has a muddy forehead or not. It could be in either case and likewise for Bob. So, Bob also does not know whether he has a muddy forehead or not essentially. So, this is the situation when we start with the extreme case is 0, 0, 0 when no foreheads are muddy and the other end is 1, 1, 1 where all foreheads are muddy. So, let us see how the process goes on. When the father comes and makes an announcement that at least one of you has mud on his or her forehead, there was a state here which was 0, 0, 0 which vanished essentially. So, that state has gone and now we are into these states where either 1 or 2 or 3 children can have muddy. Now, notice that once this state has gone, each of the kids would have some conclusion about their foreheads. So, in the possible world in which Bob was the only one with a muddy head, Bob would know that this is a state because from here there are no Bob edges. So, if Bob was the only one, so that is what the possible world there is showing uh, with the muddy heads, then Bob would know at this stage. Likewise, uh, for uh, Kathy, if she was the only one to have a muddy forehead, she would know at this stage because there are no Kathy edges going from that edge essentially. So, these are the edges which also which got deleted alongside the announcement after the announcement and likewise for Anne essentially. So, if only one of them was having a forehead, then at this time, if that was the real world, uh, then they would know essentially. So, when the father asks, does anyone know? And nobody steps forward, then all those th three states that uh, I had circled here, all of them will vanish because if any one of them was a real state, then they would have known and they would have stepped forward and or said yes and they would. So, all those states vanished. So, we are only left with these states essentially. Now, you can look at this state, the real state here. In this real state, there is only ambiguity for Kathy. Kathy does not know. Kathy can see that Anne and Bob's foreheads are muddy. 
but she cannot see her own forehead. So, there is ambiguity about that. So, she does not know whether her forehead is muddy or it is not essentially, but for the other two people there are no, there is no ambiguity. They know exactly that uh, because at least two kids have to be having muddy forehead because the second question is about to come. They must be one of them because they can only see one other this thing. So, next time when uh, the father asks the question, everybody knows and Anne and Bob will say that yes, I know that I have mud on my forehead. Now, in the epistemic logic community, there is something called common knowledge that we often talk about and it goes like this that a proposition P is common knowledge for a group of agents. If every agent knows P to start with, then every agent knows that every agent knows P. So, this is K i P, then this is K i K j P and so on. You can keep adding these knowledge uh, operators and the statement would be true. So, every agent knows that every agent knows that every so everybody knows what is going on essentially up to any depth. Despite the seemingly difficult definition, common knowledge is very common and is easy to attain. The simplest way to do is to just make a public announcement like fathers coming and saying that somebody has forehead on somebody has mud on their forehead essentially. Of course, you can imagine situations where common knowledge is harder to achieve and uh, there is a standard example of two generals who are on different sides of a valley and both say that only when we decide to attack together that we will launch the attack and they were live in a world without any social media and without any telephones and things like that. So, this they have some mechanism uh, of communication, but it takes a little bit of time. So, general A tells general B sends a message saying that let us attack tomorrow morning. So, should they attack next morning? Not unless they have consensus. So, general A should know that general B has received his message essentially. How will he know that? He has to get a message back from general B essentially. So, when general B gets the message, then general B will send an acknowledgement saying yes, I received your message and therefore, general A knows that general B has received the message. So, so can they attack, but general B is still not sure whether his acknowledgement has been received by general A. So, general B will wait for the fact that A should tell him that he has received the acknowledgement. You can see that this process can go on indefinitely and common knowledge is very difficult to obtain in such scenarios essentially. And you can imagine that such scenarios are there on the internet where messages are going back and forth and you know servers have to send a message to somebody and other other machines have to send acknowledgements and so the TCP IP protocol and things like that. So, there are applications of uh, epistemic logic there. There is also something called mutual knowledge and it is a weaker notion that common knowledge. It says that everybody knows P but everybody does not know that everyone knows P. As long as everybody knows P, we say we have mutual knowledge essentially. In the muddy children case, if the father had whispered to every child individually that at least one of you has muddy head, then we would know that we know that this is mutual knowledge. The children do not know. The children know that somebody, something was whispered in somebody else's head but uh, they do not know what was this, but so it is not common knowledge, but it is mutual knowledge provided that the father whispers the same message to everyone. So, let P denote the fact that father announces to the children that at least one child has a muddy forehead. If everyone knows P, say the father and this is mutual knowledge, whispers in everyone's ear, but everyone does not know that everyone knows P. Then if k is equal to 1, the child with the muddy forehead will realize that he has muddy forehead, but for k is equal to 2 or larger, this will not be possible and you should just think over this and see that that mutual knowledge would not be enough essentially. This is 
the case because when k is equal to 2, the second time A does not know if B knows B essentially because A does not know what the father told B essentially. And therefore, A will not know why B is not stepping forward. So, in general, mutual knowledge will not help here. The children will never be able to conclude that their foreheads are muddy essentially. But common knowledge said that up to any arbitrary level of nesting. In general, it can be shown that if the depth is k, that the depth of this shared knowledge k1, ki knows that kb knows and so on. If the depth of this length of this uh, expression is k at least, then if there are only k children, then that much mutual knowledge is enough essentially. So, you should think about that uh, a little bit. The next topic we want to look at is belief and see where beliefs, how it contrasts with knowledge. Uh, it is an emerging area, but we shall have a quick look at uh, what are the implications of that essentially. So, we will do that in the next session.